uh, when I came in contact with the new media literacies, it was new to me also, the very concept, fascinating concept of remixing and appropriation. That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an incredible choice of words to use in this, in, in, in this new field, appropriation. Uh, because in, I have spent so much of my creative life trying not to appropriate things. Uh, I write a lot about African nest culture and, 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 and black people in this country's relationship to Africa. I've never been to Africa, but I have a sense of, I, I, I believe in villages of spiritual villages, villages of, 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 of connection, that, that if, if you write a poem, it, it's a key to the village of poets. It's a, it'll let you in. And once you're in, all the great poets, all poets are there. It doesn't mean that you are, you are going to be heralded and re recognized as great or anything like that. All it means is you got a key to the village. And, and, and I felt, I've always felt I've had a key to the village of African culture. But I was very determined never to, for instance, write a play in which I said, and I am a product of, of the Mandinka people or the Zulu people, because, you know, or I'm going to use their language as if I truly understand it. No, I don't. But, but I had a sense of the humanity and the, and the, and the cultural connection. And I had to go to the village of, my, of the elders and say, I have this word, and I think it means this, and what do you think? And sometimes in that spiritual place, the elders would say, it's a good word, you may use it. Sometimes they would say, it's not a, it's not a good word, it has no value. So when I, when I came across the word appropriation uh, in the new media literacies, I thought to myself, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a product of a culture where so much of what we've created has been appropriated and not necessarily for our benefit. Uh, you know, the great jazz artists were not necessarily making money off of jazz. Um, the record companies were making money. Uh, um, our dance forms, our music, our, our lingo, all of those things have been appropriated many, many times and not necessarily in a way in which we profited. So when, when I saw the term used, I had a lot of concern about it. I still have a lot of concern about it because does that mean that everything is fair game whether or not you understand it or not? It's value. And uh, can you just use whatever you want because it's out there? Um, and if I have any place where I think I can find my way into the world of new media literacies, it is to say before you just take something and use it, understand it. W what does it mean to the people? Where was it born? And, and it doesn't mean that it's not there to be used. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like music in the air. It's there for everyone to hear it. But don't just assume because you have a computer and, 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 you know, and I can download, a, you know, a Polynesian rhythm and an African rhythm and, and a Norwegian rhythm that I, I don't have a responsibility to understand from whence they came. That I don't, I, you know, if I'm going to use gospel music, that I don't have a responsibility to understand that it's born of a, of a, of a, of a people and a condition that, that, that must be acknowledged.